<laughs> so I'm going to just start now. Um, probably we'll see if Sarah can come down. I can fill her in later um, about what's going on today. But I just want to keep everyone uh, on time, I guess. So I'm going to sit behind here because I get to monitor the Zoom call and talk at the same time, which is always a joy, right? <laughs> but um, so I'm just going to jump straight into what this program is all about. Hopefully it'll go. Hello. There we go. Okay, so basically the idea of this program was started so that everyone in women in biohealth could grow their network a little bit more and learn from other people's experiences, um, get to know where you are in your career, where you wanna go, maybe not, not immediately, maybe farther down the road, but how will the steps get you there? Um, and then a lot of our mentors have decided to join this program as well to kind of give back to the community. Um, and share their experiences. So it's kind of a very nice interaction of a lot of women um, to get together. So um, one of the things that I wanted to start with with what this is, is basically this is a confidential group of people that you'll be working with. Um, everything said between you and your mentor stays there. It's not meant to be kind of spread all the way around. Um, everyone is learning in this program. And it's a really nice safety net for support. Um, we want to have um, a respect for everyone. And it's just kind of a nice way to prepare things. More importantly, what this program is not is helping you find another job um, with someone else. It might happen that you find another job, but that should not be your goal, that you should not be asking your mentor for their contacts to um, land a new job. Okay, so here's how it works. Basically, um, everyone kind of has to um, put in their willingness to serve either as a mentor or a mentee. If you've seen the um, application part, I'll have it up as a QR code at the end. Um, you can say that you wanna be a mentee, you wanna be a mentor, or you don't mind being either. And I'm gonna argue that we all are both throughout our day, <laughs> right? So, um, so complete the survey if this is something you would like to be part of. And um, a group of us get together and we do the matching. So we look at all of the surveys that are done. We may go troll you on LinkedIn to see where you've worked, what you've done, so that we can make the best match possible. Um, in that group or in the survey, there is a spot to say, you know, here is part of, I would say, like for me, here's part of my baggage <laughs> and that I might not be a good match for over here. Um, if that happens to be you too, you can put that in there. It's very confidential. No one's going to say anything, but um, we do try not to match people who have who work together currently or might have worked before in a direct reporting because you've already then been mentor and mentee, so you don't need to do it again, right? Um, it's 12 weeks total. So you meet every other session or every other week, kind of as a session for six sessions. And um, the mentorship plan basically is, like I said, we pair you up um, and you decide uh, as a pair, do you meet in person? Do you meet virtually? Do you mix it up? It's really up to you. We're not going to prescribe what that looks like. Um, and that one of the things that we've noticed that really helps out is for the mentee, is really doing much of the work in these 12 weeks. Um, so you're gonna be, a mentee would be identifying that goal. And sometimes that's the hardest part as we'll find out, I think in the panel of, is it too broad or is it too narrow, right? Um, and what that might look like. So you're also gonna be, the mentee is gonna be the one that does the scheduling, make sure things get done, okay? And then at the end, we're gonna come back together and have a little party and talk about what we've done. So this is the informational session. In about a month, we're gonna do the kickoff, do this again, kind of talk more about what the, and you're gonna meet your pair then. Um, and we're gonna go from there. You'll probably meet them a little bit sooner virtually, but this is a time where you can meet together. 
Um, and we're gonna provide all the worksheets at that time as well. Um, I and the other people on the team are gonna send out periodic reminders of this is the start of week three, <laughs> where are you? Um, and new this year, we're gonna kind of put in this office hours or what I'm gonna call mentor hours. And um, Susan has been nice enough to say that she will um, kind of do a mentoring with the master mentor. I know, I know, that's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get you a little back. <laughs> um, and then that will hopefully help people who are maybe struggling a little bit. If you've not been a mentor before, we think that this might be a way for you can say, I could do this too, right? So she's not gonna be available 24 seven, but we'll set up, we'll set up some timelines when that, um, how that will look later, okay? And that's based off of feedback that we got from last year's group. So basically this, the, I just kind of thought I'd run through all of those weeks, what they're gonna look like. The first week, it's basically get to know yourself. But as a mentee, if you are, you should start thinking about what you would like to do in this 12 week time period. Second week, you're gonna do, it's a lot of checking in and you're gonna discuss the responsibilities. What are you responsibility for? What is your payer responsible for, depending on what you're doing? Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that, I think in the panel of what that might look like. Um, week three, the, you'll get a little ping from us um, and you're gonna be working on your work um, development goals. This should be kind of the next thing of what are the challenges so far? Are, is your goal too broad? Is it too narrow? Has it um, drummed up a different goal, right? So, and in week four, it's basically a time to reflect and is things working? or not, and a nice opportunity to say, if it's not working, what would you skew, right? And change up so that it can work for you. And then in week five, um, development goals and feedback, basically you're almost at the end, but where's the next part to this? Um, and you know, where's the progress coming or is there any challenges that are gonna happen there? And are th this would be the time where if there are networking connections that could be made, might be the time to do this. And then week six is basically kind of wrapping things up, talking about your relationship that you've built for over 12 weeks now. And are you gonna continue? We know people that do continue. Not necessarily as mentors and mentees, sometimes just as colleagues and friends and coffee mates, <laughs> but it happens. Some people are like, hey, that was great. See you later. And that's okay too. None of this is right or wrong. It's just part of what we do, okay? And then the week of May 20th, I think, is where we're gonna come back together. That's kind of the 12th, 12th, 12th week, so. And there's a celebration time. And it's not the end of the program. I like to say it's a new beginning. So um, what we will do is then have a program evaluation. Please fill it out. We know that people in WIB don't like surveys. We have found that out. Um, but I'm hoping that everyone will fill them out so we know how to make this better for the next time around and year four. So that's pretty much it. There's the QR code. So if you, I'm going to kind of leave it up there and see how it goes. Um, but it will be on the web website as well. And it's on the LinkedIn. We'll probably be promoting that a little bit as well. Um, if you can't find it or it doesn't work, contact me and I'll find it. <laughs> okay. So that is it in a nutshell, but you can't leave yet. So um, we would like to meet more about all of you now. And um, so we were trying to figure out an icebreaker and um, so that you could kind of um, introduce yourself to the group. We're going to start um, with people here in person, and then I'm going to round over to um, the people in um, on Zoom, and I just realized that I did not share my screen. Sorry, <laughs> you've just been looking at me. I can't do everything. But I will send you a copy of um, the slides, okay? Sorry about that. Um, so the icebreaker that we would like to ask everyone is, if you could use one word, maybe two, 
um, what would it be to um, describe your career right now, 2024, January? Okay. So I'll start. I'm Michelle Smith. Um, I've been part of this program for, like I said, since it started. I am the program manager for the Masters in Biotechnology program, the in-person one. That's been around for about 20 years and also the program manager for the online program. It's been around for about four years and um, certificate in bioinformatics. So I basically heard a lot of cats and people. And if you saw my Christmas card, I actually can herd cats. Uh, <laughs> I will show you later. <laughs> um, I got four of them to be in one spot looking all in one place. So um, the word I would use in terms of um, my career right now is varied, which I really enjoy. I don't have the same day twice very often. Um, and I like the flexibility in that. And I think I'm good at being able to flex things, but that also means what? That I'm, yeah, I can do more. I can't, I, and I, I often say I'm dumb enough to say yes twice. So <laughs> anyway, that's me. And you've heard me yammer now enough. So let's start over here with Melinda. Okay, I'm Melissa Jones. I am the program manager at the EW, which means that my word I would say uh, is transition because I'm transitioning to the division of the I'm really excited about Sunday. Uh, so, um, and I, uh, along with Michelle and Cece, uh, have been kind of straight up for the division. I'm so excited to be here. Hi, I'm Julie and Cece Whitehart. I am a medical writer and instructor at the University of Philadelphia. The future of my career right now is hopefully new and so something um, as part of the the rest of what we're working for the day of the this team is working for the this team is working, they really try to adapt and build themselves uh, into those solutions. Uh, so there's a lot of other words I can probably think of, but those are right. I'm going to say barely is another one, but we do work. Yeah, I do. I'm adding a lot. <laughs> okay. I'm 
pleasure. I um, live over the summer and have been enjoying getting involved and taking advantage of all the cool networking and educating all the people they have. So I was excited when I heard about this. Um, I work as a solution architect at Interlinks Health. It's healthcare IT, so it's like bio health adjacent, but this gives you the the best women's group and network to take as well. Welcome. Um, and I, this is a very hard one word to make your question. Um, like stagnant, I guess, yeah. I think is, it's not the best word, but I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of room to stir things up and make some positive changes right now um, because I've been at my job for four and a half years and not much has changed and I'm looking to make some changes. I am here to uh, work with the newspaper government as a president of the government. Um, and I work with the newspaper government. I work with the newspaper government. You get a good thing in some people. You get to know more things in the out. But again, we have to be in the position of our students. Let's go in the back. Yeah. <laughs> we can come back to you if you'd like. Okay. All right, you're next. I've been there for about a year and a half. So at this exact moment, I would say rewarding to kind of push me up on the process that I've started with and being able to tie all the skills I learned together and not make it too different. Um, I would describe it as a career in our Say right now, the need is uh, new skills because I'm currently in a different department helping out with our company. So I've been just learning a lot and doing new group dynamics and things like that. So it's changing a lot and requires a lot of different skill sets right now. Nice. Thank you very much. 
Okay, so that ties it up um, with everyone here in person. So now I'm going to start count or, um, calling on people online. So unmute yourselves. And I'm going to start with Kelly. Hi, um, I'm Kelly. I'm currently a project assistant at Innoven. And I guess a word to describe my career so far would be just very new and starting out. Great. Christy, sorry, I've got, it's everyone, it sounds very loud here, but I can't figure out my, my computer won't scroll down. But anyway, that was great. Thanks, Kelly. Christy, you're next. Hi, I'm Christy McConkey. Hey, is it still very loud? That's all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, I work at FCDI as a quality engineer. I've been there, I think, about seven, eight months, probably a little more than that. So it's relatively new, but things are picking up and I feel like I'm getting well integrated with everything and all of the different systems and groups. And so while well, there's a lot changing, the projects are picking up. So I would say my job right now, I describe like in one word as challenging as I'm getting used to everything and those projects that are crunching to meet deadlines. Great, thanks. Um, Kaylee. Hi, I'm Kaylee. Um, I work as a research associate at Gregor Diagnostics. Um, I've been there for about a year and a half now. Um, and I would say that my career right now is really exciting. Um, I work at a really small company and so I'm kind of able to dip my toes into different areas of biotech that I wasn't necessarily, um, you know, hired to do or expected to do. I just really wanted to learn some new skills at my job. Thanks. Uh, Alexis. Hi, my name is Alexis Jackson. I'm a manager in the manufacturing department at Catalan Pharma Solutions. I've been there for just over two years now. Um, I would describe my career right now as dynamic. Um, it's, there's a lot of opportunities. There's always a lot of things going on in, uh, pharmaceutical and just manufacturing specifically in that department. We have a lot to manage. Um, so it's always fun. That's what I always say. Thanks. Carly. Hi, um, I'm Carly. I'm a doctoral student at Marquette University. Um, I'm also a research assistant in a, spinal, a lab that studies spinal cord injuries. Um, I guess a word that would describe what I'm doing now, I guess I'm still a student, so I guess that would be my word. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And Hannah. Or is it Hannah? Um, oh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah. My name is Hannah. Uh, I work at Brain Cell and uh, I've been there for just over a year now. Um, and I would describe my career so far, I think, as flexible, if I had to use one word. Um, I've worked at a lot of small companies, so it's there's always a lot of opportunities to wear a bunch of different hats for whatever situation is needed. Um, yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. And now we get to know, get to meet each other a little bit more where we're working and where we are maybe in a little, um, in our space and time. And uh, I guess if I could say one thing is it'll change. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> or, or you have the time to make it better. So, okay. So we're right on track pretty much. And our next step is going to be creating a panel. Um, and we're just gonna have some people come up here and I'm gonna try and move 
the screen so that the people that are online can see you. Um, but I don't want it to like create a bouncing effect. <laughs> but you never know. So, so I think um, Amber, Susan, um, and if you guys want to come up too, we'll have four people kind of talking about your opportunities. Yep. Come on up. We've got chairs up here. Okay. And I'm just going to. Yes. Oh, let's see. I know, right? I feel like if I unplug it, it's going to make a mess. So, I can't, I can't really move the podium. And I'm just going to do this so you can kind of see. Maybe people can move towards the corner. Yeah, maybe if you can like go in a sideways there. <laughs> How's that? Okay. Check it out. All right. So um we kind of came up with some ideas of questions, but um I'm gonna start and say, um, what was what made you the most nervous when you started this program out? And um, how quickly did that nerves change or did it stay? And that's probably for the mentees. Yep. I'll start. Yep. Actually, Go. So at, at my, um, when I started as a mentee, um, Susan was my mentor. And uh, so if you want to say anything bad, just let me know. No, it's not bad <laughs> at all. So I think in the beginning, like, um, you know, like the quality of my mentor, I was like, oh my gosh, I better bring something really good to the table in terms of goals. And, um, you know, I think initially I was really nervous about that. Like, what am I going to bring? You know, I was kind of all over the place at the time. And what I had brought instantly within five minutes, Susan was like, nope, I don't think that's your crap. <laughs> we, she really helped me feel comfortable, uh, you know, from the beginning. But I'm going to tell you, like, I probably thought about it way too much before our first meeting. Like, I had my section filled out. I had her section filled out. <laughs> I had, you know, like, so, um, but yeah, she she pretty quickly put me at ease. And I think that's on turn four. And um, I think in the beginning, I was nervous because you are starting that relationship with someone and you don't know. Um, in the beginning, if you're going to have kind of that chemistry in the beginning, so you where you'll be able to hit it off right away. I think most people that join this program are really willing and open to work with you wherever you're coming from. So I think, you know, within our first meeting with that one as well, um, those feelings of nervousness are like. Um, I think for me, I wasn't so much nervous. Just because, um, so like most people here, I moved to Wisconsin, I'm not from here, I wasn't raised in Wisconsin. So I kind of was just trying to build a network of people. Um, so I kind of just had the mindset of like, I have nothing to lose. Um, uh, I think the one thing I might've been a tad nervous about was maybe having, um, I guess like chemistry with like my um, mentor, like are we gonna get along? And um, you know, like my mentor, she's been great. I feel like I learned a lot and the fact she works in like a slightly different space than I do gives me a different perspective that I didn't think of sometimes. Um so that's kind of what I have to say about the mentorship program so far. I feel like this can apply to mentors as well, or at least I found for myself that I was a little bit nervous going in not not having met Emily yet and not knowing what to expect or if I would be a good mentor for the situation, but I really liked the resources that were provided and you know, we immediately hit it off. So that really put my mind at ease. Great. Thanks. Susan, or do you want to just, we just go off? All right. <laughs> so here's my question. And, and um, Isabel also sent me her notes. So I'm going to add to them. Um, and the other one, another question that um, we had was, what was your biggest challenge during the program? 
And for Isabel, it was basically to coordinate the time that was convenient for both, especially because we used to start this like January 4th. So it was very difficult for a lot of people. And based on feedback, that's why we pushed it um, a month out. So that's why. But how about you? Well, I'll start with Susan on this one. Was there a challenge? Well, <laughs> clearly it was Amber. Um, but it's true. She did try to overachieve. It was really amusing. So we were part of the pilot program when it first started. And I think that the biggest challenge for us was we didn't get to meet in person. Mm -hmm. So we were stuck on Zoom calls and we didn't meet until the end wow. of the program. Yeah, was it was, we started this in the pandemic. Period. So, yeah. so, you know, I think it's challenging always to try to get to know somebody in that kind of very artificial situation. It's tough enough when you know somebody and you're in that distant, you know, kind of thing. But I think it was, it was uh, a little bit more. And then last year, the same thing. Um, you know, I was, I was working with somebody remotely as well or on Zoom, um, but we did meet also at the end of the program. I think that if you can meet in person, even I think the first meeting and the last meeting, even if you can't make the inverse, I think it's the first meeting particularly, I think it helps with what Amber was talking about in terms of being comfortable with the other person, getting to know what they're like. It's just different body language matters. Um, I used to lecture on that at <laughs> one of my lectures. Um, you know, body language is way different uh, than just being on a little frame on a Zoom, you know. So I think it's important to do that about scheduling. What I did in both cases and what I do with the people that I mentor in many other programs is we set the schedule at the first meeting. So it was like it was every it was every other Wednesday until then if something came up, you could change it, but it was a lot easier to just set the schedule for the entire time rather than trying to revisit it each time. I think another thing that is really challenging for mentees. And I could actually feel it in the room when you put it up on the board <laughs> is you're responsible. Okay? I was at a mentoring meeting this morning, so it's just kind of funny, but it's it seems overwhelming that you're responsible for you know the the agenda really on your meetings. But it's you, <laughs> it's not about your mentor, right? It's about you. And so taking on that responsibility of saying this is what matters to me, or this is where I'm struggling, or whatever. You don't have to have it right. You know, you can change it the next week if you need to. Something comes up. Um, you know, I think the other thing that happens frequently, and again, I've been I've been mentoring formally for the last 12 years and informally for many years before that, is that um, uh, people don't want, people are looking for answers. And if you're going to be a good mentor, um, I could tell you a little story. Should I tell you a story? Tell the story. Okay. Tell the story. So, uh, so I have a son uh, who is now 30 years old and traveling the world, but um, when he was like two and a half, we were in, living in Southern California and we were taking a drive about an hour away to see some relatives because in California, you don't know if it's going to be an hour or two, you know how long you're in the car, right? So anyway, we're in the car, we're going up the freeway, and he's in the back seat in that little you know, car seat back there. And every five minutes, it was like, where are we going? We're going out the lines. Why are we going? Because um, we want to visit with them. What's that sign say? <laughs> sign says 55 miles an hour. Okay. Five minutes later, where are we going? <laughs> Why are we going there? What's that sign say? So finally, after, I mean, we're in the car for an hour, right? So finally, after about the fifth time, I turned around and I said, Matt, where are we going? And he said, hey, I don't have answers. I only have questions. You used to me. And I thought, huh. That's a good mentoring um, yeah. tale because that's really what re the relationship is. Your responsibility as a mentor is not to have the answers. Doesn't mean you can't provide your perspective, but it does mean that your your responsibility is not to oh this is how you should solve this. It's more about asking the questions and making sure that you can guide your mentee through the the thought process that they have. And, you know, can you hone down your goals? Can you start to think about things that are actionable? So I think that's a real important thing when you become a mentor is to, to realize that you don't have to give the answers. You should be asking more questions and the same thing from a mentee standpoint. Understand somebody's not gonna come up to you and say, here's here are the answers, you know, go, go make your career work. Um, it just doesn't work. 
So hey, yeah. I don't get it. I don't have an answer. And I would say that we each week there's a sheet mm -hmm. of for the bed tees to be like what you should be thinking about. The sheets have kind of some of them are like questions of like what are you doing or and then some of it is very prescribed of what you should do so it's not like you're just floating out there doing nothing right so you there are nice forms that you can kind of fill out that to get you started doesn't mean you have to follow them but it does help the tools are really good in yeah the program i've been very impressed with them. yeah um, we just can't give them out until you've been matched so um i think for me as a MT, um, one of the challenges was the debt, the fact that you are responsible. So being prepared for the meetings, I know some meetings I might have not been as prepared as I would have was like, just because you know work gets in the way mm -hmm. sometimes, but holding yourself responsible for that. Um, I know for me personally, one of my goals was um, I knew that I wanted to go back to school within the next like two years or so. So that's where uh, my mentor came in and um, gave me suggestions on you know, more, like, more like connections on people I can contact uh, because I didn't know what exactly I wanted to go back to school for. Um, and that's where like my mentor came in and she was like, I know so and so that works in like, QA, someone that works in um, business development, just to like chat with them. And that was one of the things that maybe at times I wasn't hitting my goals on a weekly basis because you're reliant on sometimes other people, but that's where you definitely just have to, you know, be responsible yourself and make sure you're keeping up with your end of the bargain. Sure. And for me, from a mentor perspective, I think the biggest challenge was kind of focusing into, you know, from a lot of great ideas, kind of this, um, you know, some broad goals and very important goals, not wanting to squash that, but help helping to provide focus because that's something that I also struggle with for myself in both settings. So providing that support in an area where I'm weaker in as well. You know, I think that brings I, both girls. I think that brings a real up a really good point, which is if you're a mentor or a mentee, you're going to get something out of this. And that's what Michelle was talking about. As a mentor, I don't keep coming back to mentor other people over, you know, 20 years because I'm not getting anything out of it, right? I learned a lot. And so it's not a one-way street. It is definitely a give and take. You all have something to um, to contribute to your mentor as well as your mentor contributing something to you. And that's the best relationship is that when you're both getting something out of uh, out of the relationship, it's not a one-way street. And that's what it is. Which brings me to my next question, which is, um, how has this impacted your career? Well, mine, mine's yeah. over. So Yours I'm done. Like, yeah. What yeah. happened to me? Yeah. <laughs> so I think for me, this, I did a lot of self-reflection. I think this is really investing in yourself uh, as a mentee, especially as a mentor as well. And just getting clear about what is important. And I think, you know, that was also my challenge is holding myself accountable <laughs> to following through. Um, I still have trouble with that, um, but I think in my career, it helped me think about those next steps, things I learned, like saying yes, but with discernment, <laughs> making sure that I have that end goal in mind, um, you know, and just really being real and honest, and I think all of those things have helped me have a more clear path on what I want to do next, you know, in business and with my own career, so. Well, I think for me, one way that it's helped is, um, for example, um, I got recommended through one of my goals to chat with someone, and now I have like another unofficial mentor out of that. Nice. Which is that's really great. nice. Um, so that's one way. And then I think the second way for sure is um, even just like coming to this meeting and meeting a bunch of strangers. I think that helps a lot. It gives you some self confidence just to put yourself out there. And for me, it's helped develop my skills and confidence in mentoring and really has helped me see the difference between teaching and mentoring, which is something that I'm still growing in. Um, I know the slide said it's not the end of the journey, it's the beginning, the new beginning. Um, so it's certainly something that I'm 
conscious of and really trying to implement in the day to day. I work with really great people on the team, and when I'm mentoring, they might ask for an answer. But if I respond you know, with a question, I know sometimes that type of thing is annoying, but really, there are a lot of times where the person has the answer themselves, but they don't have confidence in it or they don't know it. So providing that space rather than just an answer that doesn't provide them out and an opportunity for growth is something that I'm cognizant of in a way that I wasn't before and able to use and to stay. Okay, anyone else have any questions that you would like to know? So I'm very curious about these worksheets. Mm -hmm. um, do they help you set your goals before the program? Like, like, I think that's probably where I'm struggling with the most is that I don't have a specific goal, but I would love help moving forward somewhere. So my question is like, how did you know what your goals were going to be <laughs> as a, as a mentee? I personally knew that I wanted to go back to school within the next like two or three years. So that was like my main goal. And then I just made goals, um, like smaller goals out of that. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> they So in the worksheet, there, there is a section for and there is some, um, you know, resources for goal setting, et cetera. So you will have that available to you. And there's a lot out there as well. But I think in... You know, in my initial goal setting as a mentee, you know, I was overburdened, overworked, and so I'm like, clearly, I need better time management skills. Like, it's it's all about me being able to take on more, right? Like, but that was not what I learned through self reflection and Susan was that you know, like, it wasn't that I needed better time management skills. I needed better balancing. I needed to deal with. Some of the things I was overworking myself not to do. You know, so I think um I think part of it is you being really real about what your priorities are and then making your goals around that. I think that was really hard in the beginning because we have this like thing that we know we should do want to be, right? And sometimes that image is not the reality. You know, it's yeah. It, it's not a uh, it's not a repair program. Okay. Yeah. You know, and it's not a matter of I'm going to take this one thing and when I finish this, I'm going to be better at it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's not the goal. The goal is first of all, I would say if you can be mentored your entire life, God love you, do it. Really, because you know you're going to have different stages of your career, different things, different issues. You know, that's great. Find another mentor. You know, through other people, come back again and be a mentee again. But you don't have to be stuck in one goal. But I think you do know what your big goal is. You feel stagnant in your job. Yeah. You know. I know what your goal is. I know. Yep. You know, too. So it's a matter, I think I think Amber's right. It's a matter of just being really honest with yourself in terms of where you feel stuck. What is it that, what's your question? What What is it that you need some help trying to draw a boundary around or, or think about? You know, a lot of the mentoring I do is with people who are starting up businesses. And even in that case, you think that their goal is, I want to start this business. It's not most of the time. Most of the time, it's how big is your market? <laughs> you know, oh, then think about that. You know, I mean, it's things like that. What are you going to price this at? How are you going to sell it? That it's not, I want to start a business. It's much smaller things that people have to, you know, tackle. And so I would say you you do know, but again, remember, it's not going to solve anything. What it's going to do is help give you some tools and thought process to get you closer to whatever, you know, that goal happens to be right now. It's not about this kind of goal. It's about this goal right now. This is the kind of goal I need, and this is what I'm hoping to get out of the program. And for the kickoff, I, we're going to have someone talking about goals and mentorship versus kind of management, right? And so you'll get another little feel for it, but those, the tools, the little resources are a nice way of doing it. But that was one of the reasons why we use the, that what's one word, right? Because, and I've written them all down. So we're going to share them um, with everyone. And, you know, there were a couple that hit a couple of times. So, yeah. Anyone else? Well, if you can't ask questions, you know. No. Yep. So I'll ask more.
So this is one that I already know the answer to for, I think all of you, but um, how did you continue your relationship once the 12 weeks were over or had? Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. single night I was still friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and I, uh, you know, uh, I, I like to stay in touch with people that have mentored if they want to stay in touch. Because I do think once you've got a relationship going, it's easier to come back with that one question or that issue. And then when you're not in a formal mentoring situation, it's a little easier to go, oh, don't do that. <laughs> I got to try not to. But, um, you know, but it's good to have that, that ongoing sounding board relationship. So I think it's great. But if somebody doesn't want to, that's fine as well. And if nothing else, I would say that in the back of your head, like um, Susan and I have been around, but it's that what would Susan do <laughs> type of thing? And and my husband had a little situation over the summer that was, he was totally out of his league. He's a professor on campus, never really worked in the real world and, <laughs> and had a real world thing kind of plopped in his lap. And I was telling him what he needed to do. And of course he wasn't going to listen to me. And I'm like, you know what? Let's take Susan out for dinner. <laughs> Cause you'll listen to her. <laughs> And he did. <laughs> we had a very nice time. It was nice. Yeah. But. Um, I know Kayla and I, we have on our Outlook calendars an invite once a month for coffee. Oh, that's great. It's just like more informal. If I have issues still or things I need to talk to, I go to Kayla but still. That's great. And we kind of move in and out of just like talking about what's going on in our lives at the time and kind of talking about career and we have no formal goals, but just kind of touching his race and seeing where we are. That's a problem. Um, I know. I know. You right. have the advice that you've had for setting up scheduling for next yep. year. Yeah, we can change, change it if we need to, but it, it's it's there. I hadn't thought of that. Well, walk. Really yeah, mostly walk yeah. through. Well, yeah. And I think we've matched. I want to say it was like ten the first year, fifteen last year. So we've had kind of. 20 so matches, if you will, pairs. pairs. Yeah, yeah. And um, only one pair at the end was like, this didn't work. So that was kind of a good thing to know as well. So um, we try really hard to pair people that we think are compatible, um, but it might not always work, but that's what that, it, the more you give us in that um, survey, the better off everyone is. You know, the other thing I, I'd like to talk about in terms of matching, um, and Michelle and I have talked about this, but um, is you don't need somebody who does what you do, right? That's not what this is about. It's not about, again, coaching you to do your individual job better. What you need is somebody, again, who can be a sounding board and who has you know, general knowledge of the world or, you know, how, how business works or whatever your issue is. So I think that if you, you know, you find out you're good match, so well, they don't know anything about cellular biology. Well, you know what? It's okay. That's not what we're going to talk about. You know, so just just keep an open mind about that, whether you're thinking about yourself in a mentor role or a mentee. It's not about ex it's not about subject matter expertise, right? It's about, you know, the ability to help you think about bigger issues or in some case smaller issues, um, you know, kind of home is in. So that, that I think is important. That's a really good question. Oh, yeah, I was just going to the thing on the team's match. So, have any of you had um, any challenges with it? You know, okay, you know, the relationship wasn't very well matched and could be very difficult. What was the you know, issues? Yeah, I have a minute. This program I have in some other situations where I, I was telling somebody a story this morning about again where I mentor entrepreneurs and, and uh, this woman just absolutely every time we asked her a question she would say um, well I know I'm right and I'll bring my husband next time to prove it and I was like <laughs> okay okay this isn't going to work it was pretty frightening but that's the only one I could think of that was just a disaster and finally we just fired her <laughs> they're like nope nope it doesn't go it wasn't gonna be you know it was a team of mentors there were three people she was working with and every time we said so how is this gonna work in the long run we've got a 125 percent market share how's that happening just like wow i know what you can do okay go do it 
you don't need us. But that's the only one I can think of. It does stick in your brain, though. That was a lot. It was like 12 years ago, and I still, <laughs> I can still picture her face. And I did meet her husband because she did bring him to his meeting. So I can picture this. <laughs> So this question may be more for you, Michelle, mm -hmm. but um, if it doesn't have to be like a one-to-one, -one, I work in you know research lab and someone else works in research lab, is this something like I could extend an invite to other friends outside of biohealth to be a part, or are you trying to keep it more biohealth focused? That's a good question. I would mm -hmm. say... Have them go ahead and apply. Yeah. yeah. Because we need to know more about okay. them and what their interests are and where, you know, because there might be somebody outside of Biohealth who maybe want to get into it, right? And this would definitely be a good for that. But yeah, go ahead and have them apply if you want to share that, um, you know, with, with everybody. You know, there's no guarantees of a match if you have any cancer. In this room, we certainly try to match everybody, but if not, we do extend you to. Again, and we do our best, but yeah, if um, you know, just have them apply and we'll see. And last year, we had several people that are engineers, but their companies are the ones that help build labs and various things. So, even though they were very much in a different path, they had, like you said, they were kind of adjacent, mm -hmm. and those were good matches. So, I would say, yeah. Um, but we can't guarantee any of it, but, you know, and I would just say Isabel made a comment at the same thing that Susan had said about one of her biggest thoughts of the, of the conflict, maybe, or she wasn't sure if she had made a good match initially was basically communication styles. And she wasn't sure. And she made a nice note. I think that we are all doers <laughs> and we get things done, Right. I would say everyone in this room is that kind of person. So that as a mentor, she immediately wanted to react of like, go, go, go. And then so, but she said that as a mentor, she had to really think about, all right, I need to just sit for 10 to 20 seconds, maybe a minute and let everything sink in and then speak as a mentor. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing that she said that was a good learning for her of, uh, you know, she, you know, immediately was like, oh, well, you could do X, Y, and Z, but let me think a little bit on this. So I thought that was a really good comment. Were there questions from anybody online? Oh, yeah. Anyone online have any questions? Hopefully you haven't fallen off. The... <laughs> they haven't disappeared. It looks like everyone's back still on. Everyone's muted. You can unmute yourself and ask questions if you'd like. Hopefully you've been able to hear, okay. Oh, Sarah. Yeah. Um, so um, we talked a bit about like, the play at the end of the season, I mentioned I think it was the last match. Um, how, like if I left it up to you guys, how do you decide you want to know the secret sauce. <laughs> uh, I, I guess I'm just, I'm just curious if it's if it's the idea to just make the natural you know, or, or from even from your guys' perspective, if you're in that transitional period where you kind of go out of the way, if you need to be popular, if you need to jump in and say, I'm doing this. Well, last year, I would say last year we had 15 strong mentees and we had seven, eight strong mentors. And then we had the rest, like five people said, hey, whatever. So we we're like, great, you're mentors now. And we got to match everyone together. So that was last year. But even if you have to have somebody have they want to be a mentor, they want to be experience. And you feel like you're doing the best for the 
Um, so that we don't have to do like a seven year per se, but like to have all this life experience, um, we have some participants. So even if somebody doesn't put you know either or put me on a piece of the that something can still be found. So would you please go there? Because we do see a good match there and we hope that you'll say yes. Um, because we want everybody to have a good experience just as all the time. And the data that you provide yep. <laughs> will really help us to make that become it's it's kind of amazing, I think. Um we finally put all the sheets in and then you know we kind of separate them all and take a look at the potential matches. It's really exciting um just to see what people are excited about themselves and what they want to work on. Um and you start seeing some of those matches like popping up with those similarities, maybe in skills or whatever. Um, but there's a lot of commonality and yeah, it provides very good feedback. We still want to know your word. No, no, oh, that, okay. oh okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was me in the back. I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody yeah. Um, so I kind of bounced around on a bunch and settled on mixture, which yep. is why I was struggling to find a word. Uh, I'm kind of in a just particularly this quarter, I have a batch of projects very similar to other projects, kind of cookie cutter, and one that's very different than how we normally run projects. And that's a lot more of, oh, go find this person and talk to them and figure this out because it hasn't quite been done before and talk to this person and figure this out. Um, so it's tricky to balance between those of, you know, this is the, the path that I know and maybe isn't the most exciting because it's just applying the same stuff. And this one that's just wildly out there. So that's kind of where I am right now. Great. Okay, um, it's seven o'clock, and so I don't want to keep you here longer than you want, but we can definitely continue chatting if you'd like. Um, so we're here, but you can also, if you'd like to go and have the rest of your evening. Oh, and don't forget about the QR code, and I think I can, I'm going to just share this screen with everybody on the Glasses off to do it. Yeah, it's just like take a look and see how questions on the form and we're here. You know, mm -hmm. we can see your questions. Feel free to take a look and form a student guide from that. So hopefully the people online can now see the QR code so you can get it quickly. But um, yeah. Good question. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking about our tools, but I think that would be something that's very challenging. Your goals will evolve throughout life. And I also imagine through the course of these 12 weeks. Um, so is that something that you could quickly see where somebody would start out? My goal is ABC, it becomes my goal is something else. And then at the end of the day, it's great on my goal. So is that natural to see that evolution of the goal? Mm -hmm. I definitely don't like it. I don't think it will help it in my head, but I definitely remember like I think four or so. Um we changed up a little midway through because I realized oh I want to do that because it's definitely did some tweaking and refining and refocusing and I think it was already on the, the list earlier, but kind of that midway point of what's working, what's not working, what would be more effective. So there's definitely room to say, it doesn't make sense to stick with this goal if it doesn't serve you anymore. And then if it's something where you're coming in, say, if I were to say, oh, I want to be a mentor, um, are there like doubting questions to help that mentor or that the mentee Yes. Kind of thinking about that. Yeah. Okay. So that's built in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you're not, again, on either side, you're not going in line by any means. But I do think that the single most important thing, and I remind myself of this pretty much on a daily basis, is the old, I don't have answers, I only have questions. Um, you know, just to think about your mentoring mindset is much more, you know, it's fairly thing. It's not about diving in with an answer or a solution. And that's, you know, it's a good people who can't be true to do that, right? 
I never had the opportunity to have any known encounters in my career, um, but I had my worst boss and my best boss back in there. And man, I learned a lot from both of them. <laughs> you know, not want to be her, you want to be her. And, you know, she, my, my really good boss, knew never to give you an answer. You know, she just knew. The other one wanted to know if you went to the bathroom and had let them out. Okay, so don't know really under those circumstances. I want to, I want to be able to throw them, you know, whatever. So, you know, I think it's just a matter of understanding that you're there as a guide, you're there. You know, I think, I think there's also an element of just curiosity that as a mentor you bring to the relationship, which is, gee, you know, why did you say that? What are you thinking? How is that going to help? And yeah, the goals may, may evolve. Again, you're not going to solve anything in the time frame. You're going to add a little something else to your arsenal of our growth. And that's what's important. And I think I would be disappointed if after the end of the 12 weeks, somebody said, well, I didn't make any time. Or I'm bringing my husband because he knows I'm right. Um, <laughs> That would disappoint me. Um, but you know, again, maybe it's just a small change. You know? So it, it, it's it's really what you do. And again, you're setting the agenda as a mentee. Um, and so you know, as a mentor, it's just a matter of asking the asking the question and being being really curious, you know, about why somebody thinks that's important right now. Or you know, what if you're not a little uncomfortable as a mentee <laughs> and you're not even a little uncomfortable as a mentor. Um, I'd be shocked. You know, it's like starting a new job. You know, I always tell the people when they start a new job, if they're not a little terrified, they didn't take the right job. Because, you know, if you think you could do it in your sleep, you didn't take the right job. Not from my perspective, anyway. You got to be challenged. You gotta... So, you know, it's, it's a little bit like that. If you're not even just a little bit nervous, you should be. You're getting to meet somebody new, or you're going to get things like this. And so you being you know, on the mental side, coming from a training experience, but not much experience, the questions and the worksheets and kind of the, the kickoff kind of just next up for you to consider some example questions. Those were very helpful. But certainly, you know, it was a little bit uncomfortable going in, but it was certainly a nice experience and I really enjoyed it. Well, you know, uh, it's really amazing. I mean, this was many years ago, and she still, she actually became my role model. So I guess as a mentor in that perspective, she actually moved me to another job and I took over the department. Um, and so I was really glad I had her. And, and for me, great boss, was she always. Push that bar up just a little bit higher than I thought I was comfortable achieving. Since I had come from an awful boss who basically made me feel like this, she knew exactly what to do, which was, you know, you can do this. I know you can do this. And when she had a really, I was going to business school at the time, and in addition to working, when she would call it an MBA task. So I knew there was a bad one. <laughs> She's like, come here, I got an MBA task for you. I'm like, yeah. So she made me like responsible, for example, for budgets that I had never done. And so I was panicked, and she was like, "Where's it going this time?" You know. So there were just it was for me and for everybody who worked for her. It was a matter of pushing a little bit, or a little bit outside of somebody's comfort zone. And um, when that when then when I took over the team, I was really nervous because I thought, "Oh, you're going to change, right?" And but I used that same sort of approach to things, and I always did for the rest of my career. And to me, the, the biggest compliment I ever got from somebody was when I left that job, one of the people who had worked under both of us said to me, you're the best boss I've ever had. It's like, oh, better do it. Well, I mean, that's not possible. So I still carry that around because, you know, it's one time you get to that. But no, I think it's a matter of, you know, understanding. And, you know, it doesn't work for everyone, right? I mean, you know, there have been people who I like, manage. And I do consider myself a mentor and coach for everybody I've ever managed. I don't consider myself a manager. Um, but it's it's knowing how comfortable that where's that bar for that person, right? You know, if somebody's not comfortable taking three loops out of it, it's like one up. But I think everybody can go off a little bit. So for me, that that made all the difference in terms of my development as a manager and as a coach to be able to work for the rest of my career. One of my worst manage as a manager, one of my worst managing people um, 
I had to do some retraining um, for to meet some regulatory standards. And um, at one point, the person was like, why are you pushing me so hard? And I'm like, because you can do this. And if we're going to go through it, you can be the best one here. She's like, I'm a, someone's got to be the low on the, on the bottom. And I'm like, oh, I just put in way too much effort. So, you know, yeah, I guess that could be a goal too. <laughs> you can go do that somewhere. Else. Yeah, they didn't last very much longer. They did find their own way to get out. Yeah, but oh, <laughs> that was the only time I really felt like I was really managing. Yeah, but made me a better person for everyone else. But I think anyway, but it was crazy. All right, anything else? Okay, so here's what you can expect in the next month or so. Do go on and do the survey. And in February, the team will get together and we'll start matching. Um, we'll let people know as soon as we're done. I think I have the timeline here. So. They don't. I brought all sorts of stuff, but not that. Um, and by the end of February, we will have the kickoff, which by then you will know who you're paired with. And um, we'll have another little get together like this. And you can kind of think of that possibly as the first time you're meeting, but the, it really starts that first week in March. But if you have any questions as you're going along, just holler. And thank you for coming. It is a lot of fun. Please do it. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay. Thank you. I, I send I um, the the slides and I'll probably re um, voice over them so you can actually get both of the things together. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Um, we We're actually here. haven't, we haven't been able to see your screen the whole time. Bye-bye.